Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic with me, Lathrex. And, of course, welcome back to the vehicle we were building in the previous video, which is now actually stable. So, off-camera, I've been quite busy trying to figure out different ways of making this stable. I was messing around with tank controls, I was messing around with adding cacti to all the wheels, like everybody suggested, and ultimately... I came to the current design, which is very similar to the previous design, except we have double bearings on pretty much everything. Now, the idea of having tank controls would work really well on this thing. It would be a lot more stable, since we didn't have to have them uh, all the different wheels turn and such, but I really wanted a vehicle which felt like my last vehicle in terms of controls, just because I find it way more fun to use, and I think I've pretty much got there. As you can see, the wheels are now incredibly stable. There's only a slight wobble to them once in a while and this doesn't affect steering in the slightest and yeah the speed's okay it's overall just a much more stable version of the version we had before and this is with the extended poles as well which we could change drastically and simply have them down there or something i I've really only put them there because I find it more fun and I like how it looks. Also, I will be adding suspension soon as well, which will make it even more stable. So what we're doing today, though, is first of all, I need to do a little bit of riding because I am completely out of component parts because today we are building ourselves a crane. Or at least something when it comes to harvesting. We could go with a similar design as to what we had in the previous video, but I think a crane or something would just be different, and I think it would be a lot more interesting. Now, I know this isn't the most original design ever, since other people have done robot arms and all sorts of other stuff. I always see it in the thumbnails and in the um, comment suggestions, but I want to build one from scratch and see if we can get it working. Now, I don't know how true this is, but by attaching the extra bearings, it seems like I've also increased the power of the vehicle. Not the speed, necessarily, but the extra bearings on the wheels do have their own attachments to the controllers. And because of that, it seems like it's dealing with hills even better than it did before. And honestly, that was one of its strengths. It's very close to being essentially a wall climber, making me think of the old Robocraft days when you'd use thrusters pointing down to essentially attach to walls. Which we could do. We're not going to, but I'm just saying it seems like that's something which is in the realm of possibility. Now, how many component kits do we need? Well, first of all, I would like another fully upgraded driver seat. And the reason for that, I'll explain in just a second, but sadly that is very expensive in terms of component kits. Then I would like a load more pistons. I would like some more controllers. We're going to need a couple of stacks. And thankfully, this first raid has been really, really good for component kits. Hello. Just how close you are to the wall, I will uh, destroy you via gun. Don't let me be knocked off. Wow, yeah, really good. Also, we have some serious rubbish. We have cacti everywhere, by the way. I'm going to throw these away. That's how many we have. I made like 30 by mistake since I left it on repeat. They're very cheap, but they don't stack, and I've got them everywhere. Now, the cacti themselves were really good, so thank you for everyone who suggested that. It turns out, although they're not the highest friction, I think that's the boot, which is 7... They are the highest friction or something like that for the size of them, since they are... Oh, that was weird. They are only one block in size. Come yeah, on. Now, I know lots of other people are already using them for that, and it did seem like it was a very good idea. The extra friction on the wheels were fantastic, but the pistons still beat them, so... Yeah, still not going to be using them for the time being, but I might end up re-adding them to the wheels later. Apparently, adding them on, like, spokes is a good idea. Again, thank you for all the comments. Now, before I forget again, why do I want a max level driver's seat? It isn't because of the connections. I don't think I'm going to need that many for the crane. I think I'm going to need a lot, but not the maximum. It's because on level 5, you get bearing settings, and these are going to be really, really important. Not only can it control just how far you can turn them, which is really useful... You also have the turn speed, again, really useful, and finally, the bearing lock. Now, that is going to be the most important thing. So, with this, it means we can turn the crane a little bit, and with bearing lock on, when we let go of the controls, it will stay turned in the correct position. That way, we don't need anything else. All we need is the driver's seat and the bearings, and that will make everything so, so much easier. Now, we could attach this to our current seat, but I kind of just want two seats for it. I feel like that would be a lot more fun. I feel like it would just feel a bit better to use. And it would be simpler. And I like simple. So we need a few more bearings for that. Then maybe a, one or two more stacks for everything else. And we're good to go. Now if we wanted the crane to be really simple, this is essentially it. 
<laughs> in terms of the turning. So we just have two bearings here. We could add more of them, and it's all set to maximum, and then bearing lock. We need two of them, sadly, because this is the most it can go, and that means it's basically just, um, well, it's not complete unless you have two of them. Then if you lower it, you could have a perfect 360 arc where it stops in the same place, but that's not really necessary, but we can mess around with that later. But as you can see, we can go all the way around fairly easily, and if we let go of the controls, it sticks where it is. Again, if we wanted it really simple, then all we would need is an extending arm and a downwards arm with the drills, and that is pretty much it. But I also want this thing to rise up, and I would like if we could somehow control the pistons a bit better. Because the problem is with the pistons, if you even have it on a loop like this, this one is attached to, yeah? Yep, yeah, okay. If you let go, it simply goes back and retracts, so we need a way to keep it active. But not only that, I would like it to be customizable. So let's say I'm pressing the button and I want it to stop there. If I let go, I want it to stay where it is. I think it's the same if you turn the loop off, correct? So if I, yeah, I let go, it just goes back to where it was. There must be a way. So the only way I can think of off the top of my head... Ooh, that was creepy. Yee. The only way I can think of off the top of my head would be if we could somehow um, attach this to a clock so we're constantly giving inputs. In fact, I think that might work. Yeah, I might just do a bit more research on that. I think this is one of those cases where I can't just learn this off the top of my head very easily. Hmm. Well... That is going to be a little bit annoying. So after doing a little bit of looking things up, mostly just looking at comments, it seems like, yeah, that's an idea which has been mentioned to me many times that apparently somehow I've completely missed. I do read like 90% of comments. Apparently that one's been avoided though. So the idea is if you keep on pulsing the piston, you can keep it where you let go of the controls. So that makes sense. So what's going to happen is that, again, I'm not looking up videos here. I'm trying to think of how I can get this to work. So if I have a clock similar to how I use the watering system and then hook it up to our driver's seat. So the driver's seat will deactivate the clock whilst also activating the piston. But then if I let go of the button then the clock's active, and thus the piston is being moved back and forth very slightly and keeping itself in place. That's how I'm thinking it is. Again, I'm not the first person to think of this. Apparently, lots of YouTubers seemingly have done this, so I'm not taking any credit here for exactly a novel design. To be fair, I don't think I've made anything so far which is particularly novel, but I think I'm um, progressing at an okay pace. Whoa, that's interesting. So apparently it turns so quickly at the moment that um, it kind of throws out the piston. <laughs> Well, that's something to note, isn't it? Okay, yep, need to, to uh, change the speed on these things. Oh, they're at minimum already. Okay, well, we need to figure out a way to fix that, but that's something for the future. Okay, let's see if we can get this then to be customised. So I need some logic engines and a timer and... What else? I'll just pick up everything. As usual, I'm back in the water collecting glue. Apparently, there is going to be a way to automate collecting gas and everything in the future, according to the devs. So I'm hoping there is going to be a way to get glue a little bit easier, because you need it in so many things. So, how many timers am I going to need? I think I'm going to need three? Maybe four. I think three. So I'm going to try and make enough um, controllers, enough everything for three sets. The reason is, I want to be able to control the length of the pistons... First of all, the piston, which is going to control how high up everything is, the crane itself. Then the distance away from the craft, and then the actual drill section going down. And I don't think I can hook them all up to the same clock. Can I? No, I don't think I can. I think I need them all to be separate. Which means we're going to need at least six logic gates. I have three currently, and we're going to need at least three timers. I have zero currently, so yeah, lots of glue needed. Okay, so it doesn't quite work the way I thought it would. So I figured out a way to make it extend and to pause. There we go, so now it's paused in place. If I was using a switch, this would be a lot easier. Actually, is it pausing in place or is it extending slowly? No, I think it is pausing in place, right? 
Looks like it. Left and let go, I'll extend. Problem is, I don't know how to bring it back. <laughs> so, there is a problem there. There is a problem. Oh, I think I know how. Okay, if we hook it up to a controller, so as long as it's in this state, it's going back and forth. Okay, yeah, I think I know how to do it. I think I know how to do it. Though I'm going to need a switch. Okay, I understand I am terrible at logic gates, but I am slowly learning, and although I think I've made this more complex in terms of just needing more switches, I've also made it really quite clean. So if I press 1, it extends or attracts, nice and simple. I'm actually tempted to hook this up to a button instead, because I think that would make it easier. And then number 2, we'll pause it in place. As simple as that. So we have two switches per section of pistons, but it's really easy to figure out exactly where I want this to be. So, now, and then all the way down, or I could just change direction. So, essentially, I've removed the controller, and instead, I've hooked up this logic gate here. This is an AND gate, which is attached to an XOR gate. You can see the switches are attached like this, and then that is just hooked up to our clock. And I think this is how we're going to do it. I know there's likely way more elegant versions. I will probably just look up a um, logic gate guide in the future. But for now, just learning by myself. Just messing around. I'm having quite a bit of fun here. And yeah, I mean, that's a very clean, easy way to use this. Now, of course, we are having to go off the pistons level itself. I think the controllers can actually bypass that and extend the pistons past their level. Though I've seen conflicting results with that, to be perfectly honest. It doesn't really matter too much, this will still work out how I want it to. Plus, we're going to need multiple pistons on the way down anyway, because the crane's going to be quite high up, and it needs to reach the very, very bottom, so we're going to need two sets of pistons for that anyway. So, let me hook it all up, and let's see if it's easy enough to use. If it is, I might start installing this onto the vehicle. For the prototype crane! Okay, in theory, this should work. So, I want it to go to this height. Extend that far, and go that far down. Increase the height to there on that rock. Further out again to about, let's say, here. And extend about there. Oh no, I have extended it too far. How do I fix this? There we go. Yeah, that's actually really simple when you um, get used to the controls. Again, I know there's probably better ways of doing this, but on the upside, it means I only need one clock attached to all of it. It's just really switch heavy, which is the problem there. And then we'll have one more for one more piston underneath. Well, actually, no, we wouldn't need to do that all, would we? If we could attach this to both pistons, so both extend at the same time, yeah, that would be absolutely fine. Okay, I think then I'm ready to start building the final version. Gonna need some more upgraded pistons, though. I want at least two pistons per piece as that seems to make it a fair bit more stable. After that, we're good to go. I don't think I will be connecting the collector right now to this, just because I want to make sure this even works. And thankfully, there's a test bit of rock right here for us. Okay. Okay. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this works on this. I've added even more turning capability, which honestly looks kind of creepy. Okay, then pause it there. Unpause it, and yet we have complete control. Fantastic. Now, we probably won't need to use that one that much, honestly, since there's not that many rock formations, which is taller than, well, the default of where this is. But at the same time, though, there are a few, so it's good to have that. So, let me set up the rest. I have upgraded all of our pistons to max, though I still think I'm going to need two more upgraded pistons just to make sure we can get to the ground when this is extended even a little bit. So I may need to go out and explore a bit again and destroy some chests. Hopefully this will all be worth it. I really do think this is going to be potentially a fantastic way of harvesting, at least a different and fun way. But we'll see. We shall see. So I've done some testing, and it seems like, sadly, the controllers can no longer override the maximum range limit. As you can see, that one can only go to 13, and the controller reflects that. I've also tested this out with a maximum level controller, and yeah, it's still the same thing. So that's a bit of a shame, but I think we can get away with that. Let's go back to the top. 
since we do need multiple pistons for the uh, the side as well, it turns out. I've also currently flipped our whole thing currently facing this way. That way we have a complete 180 arc, so we can mine anywhere here, rather than being able to do this. I think that would be better. And we could go with a full 360, it's just a little bit less stable, that's the only problem. Again, the, the stability normally is just more of a visual thing, it just looks worse, but that's still something to note. For now, it's going to keep it like this, it shouldn't have any major problems with this. And these two pistons should be more than enough, although one of them is not fully upgraded. I don't think we're going to need any further than that. So what we need now then is two... No, four fully upgraded pistons. Thankfully they're not that expensive to upgrade. And then we're pretty much done. We have all of the base materials. Just need to add the drills and then that can be attached to a controller to spin. And we have our mining crane. It's a little bit sensitive, but that's fine. The movement is still... Okay. Lots of stuff we can fix, but for a prototype, I'm actually very happy right now. Okay, let's go out and let's destroy some bots and collect some more component kits. So here's a question for everyone watching. Do you think I should make this thing faster, or do you think it would look a little bit weird? Because personally, I think it would look weird. There's actually very little stopping me from maybe doubling the speed of this thing. I think it would be a little bit more unstable, but not to the level it really affect anything. But I also feel like if it moves any faster than this, it would just look bizarre. So I am kind of torn. Of course it would be better to drive around, but then that's why you have exploring vehicles. I do want a fuel engine based vehicle with good suspension eventually, just for exploring the world. But this is our mobile harvester, it doesn't need to be that quick. Also just realised I'm going right past where I'm meant to be going. Okay, this is the third building I'm raiding. I have one more stack of component parts already. Now something weird to note is because I keep on going to the same areas over and over again, the game is starting to slow down a bit. But I think I've already figured out what the problem was. And it's because there's so many of these spines around and they're all hitting each other. Similar to when the enemies ragdoll, it seems to cause the game to slow down. So, having them in the floor like this seems to solve it. Or simply, of course, harvesting them. But harvesting them takes a fairly long time, since moving them can be a little bit on the annoying side. Okay, time for our first proper test. I just had a little bit of a test run before recording over there, and everything seemed fine. The one problem is just me. Um, figuring out the controls and getting used to it is actually very difficult, so that is definitely a problem I need to fix. I may go with a more complex design, which gives us less controls. Would make life a lot easier. Right now, it feels like one of those um, claw games, which isn't really a bad thing, necessarily. Look at that, though. That is fantastically satisfying. Okay, bring that back up. I'd like to extend a bit further. There we go. And all of the unbreakable rocks are now broken. That is all the unbreakable blocks that you can't just break with the hammer. And that is done. So that is that. Yeah, you can very easily destroy a whole rock. Now, the fine controls are very difficult. I'll admit that much. Trying to destroy these rocks now... You can do it just fine, but they tend to roll away, for instance, so you can't really get them. That is definitely one of the problems, but for destroying whole areas of rock, as you can probably see over here, I've destroyed this entire half over here in mere moments, if I can talk over here. Yeah, it certainly gets the job done. Do I think this is better than the old version? I'm not sure, honestly. It's more fun, I'll admit that much, it's definitely a lot more fun. But now we know how to pause pistons, we could just go with the old design on the front, and then have it so, as they extend, we can pause it. So it no longer pushes us everywhere. That would be pretty good. Right now it is a matter of destroying the entire rock, and then just manually breaking the rest, and then just driving over this with the vehicle in a second. Not completely done then. And again, we could potentially put the collector on here, but we'd need to make it a bit lighter, because at the moment, the weight is one of the problems. Lots of little things to fix. But, for a first test run, I am okay with that. Let's find another rock, do another test run, and see if it works at least a few times in a row. If it does, I'm happy to call the episode here, 
and I'll be doing a bit of testing off camera to see if I'm going to keep the crane idea or not. On the upside, though, we can now use the crane for things like the captured farmers, which I'm sure lots of people have already done in the past, because it is one of the logical things to do, considering you can't just pick them up. Maybe a little bit higher up. There we go. Pause you there. And down we go. Yeah, when I'm more used to the controls, I think this is going to be really good. Did that rock just appear out of nowhere then? Because it looked like a rock just appeared out of nowhere. Okay, let's get this rock here. Lovely. I think I'm hitting that one. Fantastic. Losing a bit of frame right here since I have so many things. I keep forgetting to lock the last little piece. I think it might need to extend a little bit further out, which is actually interesting. I didn't think that was going to be the case. Yeah, the lag is coming from the fact we have so many things on the ground now. I mean, I'm sure the crane itself isn't helping, but that is what's tipping it over the edge. Oh, I think I'm hitting that last bit of rock. Yes, I am. Okay, just wait until that breaks. There we go. I mean, I can't see a thing that I'm doing, so naturally it's the perfect time to try and handle heavy machinery to destroy rocks. There we are. I missed some. Yes, I did. Lovely. I'm slowly getting better at the controls. Note, slowly. Just going back and forth for a second to destroy that. Fantastic. The lag is horrendous at the moment, I will admit that. It all went away after I halfed the first section. There we go. You can probably see what I'm doing a lot better than I can. Even if the frame rate is just tanking right now. Still so much fun. Practical? I don't know. Fun? Yes. Am I hitting something? I think I am. Okay, let's uh, bring everything back. And let's harvest what I've already broke. So, I think we do need to have the collector on the drill, and we just need to destroy all these pieces fully, because, yeah, that frame rate drop is horrendous. I'll be looking for ways to reduce that before the next video, so perhaps I'll have fixed it just by messing around with the game itself, but, yeah, all these stones just cause so many problems when they're all stacked together like this. Yeah, getting used to the controls is... Oh, what is that? Hello. Um, I was going to say, getting used to the controls is the most difficult part, but then suddenly, from out of nowhere, we get attacked by a boulder. You know. As you do. So my opinion right now is, this is fun, but probably not practical for the long term. Though saying that... In one day cycle, I've now got two full stacks of metal, and that's not including the metal still currently in the collector, and of course all the stuff here. So it wasn't exactly slow, because we didn't have to constantly return back to base, even though I'm manually doing the last bit. It's definitely better than the old vehicle, it just is, and it's more fun, so overall, I'm gonna say success. 
but flawed. I think um, an idea which a lot of people have mentioned, which I am sure I've seen the thumbnail of before, so once again going into completely unoriginal territory here, is what we could do is have drills on either side and they simply close around the rock. So rather than going down, you go from left and right. That way you would be kind of um, pincering everything, all of the rocks which are falling would instantly be destroyed rather than letting them simply roll everywhere. That would solve a lot of problems. I was just hoping this one would be a bit easier, but right now it seems like even if I do refine the controls or just get used to them, which could work as well, it might not really be the overall solution. Still a lot of fun, a lot of science was done, and I do need all those pistons for other things anyway, so I did need to build everything, so that wasn't a huge loss. Oh look, all the lag's gone away now, now I've um, cleared most of the rocks. And again, we have just got an insane amount of resource much faster than the old vehicle. So I think my final thoughts are I'm not going to be giving up on this design. It is still my first version, and honestly a rushed version of that, and it still works pretty well. I think something like this could work on a mobile base, so something even larger than my current vehicle, which is a bit more difficult to move around. But currently, the wheels are actually really good on this thing, along with its steering, which means we could just have a more traditional harvester, especially now we know how to pause the pistons. But a large vehicle, yeah, I think this could work. Just need to make it a bit more elegant. Definitely something to work on off camera. Now I've just checked, and we now have a full two stacks of metal already. And we have like six stacks of stone. So yeah, much faster than the original harvester. But with that, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. So if you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favorites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Scrap Mechanic is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I'll be messing around off camera trying to see if I can make this a little bit better, a little bit more elegant, and if not, we will try a different resource method. Although in the next video, I just want to get my shotgun, so that's our major plan. I want to go ahead and finally get the spud shotgun and see how that deals with pretty much everything. I'm in the mood now for something a bit more laid back, a bit more potatoey. So, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a lovely day. Do take care, and until next time, goodbye. I'm a weird mechanic, ain't I?